Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, we're really excited because this is our first episode that we're doing in collaboration with the Pony Club. Yeah. It's a very new episode for me because I feel horrifically unprepared in that <laughs> I haven't read any of the notes and I know nothing about the subject matter. But that's fine because the purpose of our first collaboration episodes are going to be an introduction to disciplines. So yeah. you've got nine disciplines the Pony Club does. We're going to do an episode on each of them to give you a bit of background, general rules, yeah. how to get involved. Um, and, and the best yeah. part about me knowing nothing is that hopefully I'm going to ask all the questions that you guys would ask if you didn't know what the topic is. That makes sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. So there is a reason that I haven't done any homework. So the first episode that we're going to do, first discipline we're going to cover, is endurance. Because it's actually the most recent discipline that's been added to the Pony Club. Really? Um, yeah. Oh. You didn't definitely read the notes, did you? Um, and <laughs> I was not lying. <laughs> and uh, we've also got an interview coming up with the current Young Rider National Endurance Champion. I'm so, so excited. I'm really be... excited for that. She's so lovely. Yeah. been on my messages. She's been so nice. Um, and we thought it'd be good for you guys to have an idea of how her sport works before we yeah. talk to her. So as someone who has never done endurance, I've only ever seen like the... Um, footage and stuff from people doing it in the Middle East. Um, tell me about it. So, um, the first modern endurance ride yeah. was back in uh, 1955. Yeah. And there's a group of riders in Can the States. Just, you did that really well, like you didn't have it. Really <laughs> <laughs> I'm this. Um, I know all of this. <laughs> Please edit that out. Um, but the group of riders in the States, they set out to prove that horsemanship was still alive and well in the modern age. So riding over long distances, but being able to bring their horses home, not knackered on yeah. their knees and fit to go further. Yeah. So they travelled the old Pony Express route over Sierra Nevada. Oh, that's so cool. It's about 100 miles or 160 mm -hmm. kilometres. And today is regarded as the toughest ride in the world. It is known as the Tevis Cup. Yeah. And it's really interesting because 160 kilometres is top level FEI endurance. Oh, cool. So, so they've kept work. that from back in the day. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Um, in 1966, they had a 100 mile ride in Aust the Australian Blue Mountains. Mm -hmm which took into account steep mountains, quicksand, and also steep drops. Oh my god, um, quicksand. Yeah. Australia oh my god. Is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the rides now held um, all over Australia, in different yeah. places each year. Um, and there are lots of rides in the UK mm. that go over various terrain and over um, in national parks, with the Golden Horseshoe Ride yeah. is the most famous. Oh, I've heard of that. Is that Yay. the one at Windsor? N no. No. Okay. no, it's in Somerset, <laughs> in the heart of Exmoor National Park. It's the oldest competitive ride in the UK. Oh, cool. Um, it was first run in 1965, yeah. and then in Exmoor, and then was kind of around the country a bit before it came back to Exmoor in 1974. And over the years, it's increased to become the ultimate bucket list endurance ride, uh, oh. with classes from 24 kilometres yeah. up to a two-day 160 kilometers and it's really challenging yeah. and it got some press recently or recently in the last couple of years because yeah. mary king had a go at endurance oh, cool. and she went around the golden horseshoe yeah. on a borrowed endurance horse oh so if you want to get involved in doing endurance what's the best way to do it um so pony club has yeah. endurance yeah um, and it's the fastest growing discipline in the world really endurance. yeah oh that's so cool and um, so pony club introduced it in 2009 and became a proper discipline in 2010, yeah. and it can be enjoyed by any member of the Pony Club. Um, within the Pony Club, there are five different levels of yeah. ride. So you've got the Robin, Merlin, Kestrel, Osprey, and Eagle. Merlin so is they're the... named after birds, that's yeah. really cool. That's so Merlin friends. is the grassroots equivalent. Yeah. Um, Kestrel, Novice, Osprey, Intermediate, and Eagle Open. Okay. Kestrel is about 32 kilometres. Okay. Osprey is around 40 to 45. And Eagle is about 50, 60. That seems like such a long way. Well, you see, it seems like a long way, but we'll go into it later. Once you work out your speed. Yeah. So if you do 32 kilometres at Pony Club, the optimum time, or the optimum speed when I did it was 10 kilometres an hour. Yeah. So it takes you three That's hours. Three hours, though. That's it's not long, that long. It's quite a long time. Is that not really boring? No, because as we'll explain, <laughs> you have to like look where you're going and you have to do certain points and you have to constantly check your speed and versus the terrain. Yeah. Um, 
Oh. And you also, I found that you have to get a horse that wants to do it. So my little pony was always like, come on, come on, yeah. come on, come on. Yeah. And he was like, always there for a trot, always there for a canter. Yeah. And like, you would turn the corner and he'd be like, oh, where are we going now? Come on, let's do this. <laughs> and he was great fun. Uh, he loved it. And he absolutely, um, like you'd get to the vet. Yeah. And he would stand there really quiet while the vet took his heart rate. Yeah. Like, oh, barely breathing like he knew. And then um, when you <laughs> cool them off, they say you should try and get them to pee because it lowers their heart rate. Yeah. Literally 15 minutes after he got back, he was there like... <laughs> it was good to go um so we'll start about how it works yeah. so you enter the ride yeah with entry form usually online um found online print off and in and you'll get sent some information before so you'll get your map a talk round um your times your vet sheet ride information and crew card the map will be marked with a route in mm. a color um, but there'll usually be several distances competing on the same day. So you need to find your route on the map mm. um, and make sure you know where you're going. Yeah. Um, the talk round will be a written description of the map. Okay. So it'll have landmarks on, like there's a fork yeah. in the footpath or you follow the footpath into the northeast or yeah. you'll cross a road or there'll be a church yeah. um, or something like that. And it's also really good if to know where your checkpoints are yeah. to know on the talk round. Um, your vet time so that's when you present your horse to the vet and once you've presented your horse to the vet you have to start half an hour after mm. so that you're not hanging around too much and you get going um, your vet sheet is where your vet will write down your horse's heart rate and soundness mm. but you have to fill out some information beforehand such as where it is the horse you're riding and your details before you start mm. so there used to always be like any um, marks on your horse before you start so if it had a cut on his leg or anything um, markings wise yeah. so the vet knew that hadn't happened on the ride wow so really detailed yeah like they're really up there with welfare and yeah. trying to get your horse as happy as possible um, the ride information will give you the directions to the venue and the postcode as well as information for your crewing so your crew other people that come round to pour water on your horse to help them cool so down like around mom. yeah like your mum um, and might give you some chocolate or offer your horse some water. Um, so they will t that will tell you where they're allowed to go because you can't just park the side of the road. You have yeah. to get designated crew points. Just so, you, do you have to have like a, a spare car to drive to crew points? Well, lots of endurance riders don't have lorries. They have yeah. cars and trailers. Oh, so they unhitch. Yeah, they unhitch oh, and they drive. That's so um, smart. Yeah, and also realistically, if you think about it, because you're on your horse for so long, you can't really do multiple rides. Yeah. Yeah. You can only really ride one horse a day. So yeah. it's not really worth having a big lorry. Yeah. Um, and, oh yeah, and the last thing you're going to get is your crew card. Mm. So that's going to go in the windscreen of your crew vehicle with mm. your number on so that mm. the ride organisers know that it, they're meant to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, they're not just Some part, taking up space. Um, and your map, having your map is really important because you can work out your expected speed so what you can do is get a piece of string yeah which is really scientific <laughs> measure between points on the yeah. map and then you know the distance and then yeah. you do your calculation of yeah. speed equals distance, distance over time. time to work out how long it should take to get you between the points if yeah. you're at different speeds yeah so i used to do a spreadsheet and i would do like if i was traveling eight kilometers on my ride yeah i'd meet the points at these times and go like eight eight point five nine nine point five ten ten point five eleven yeah. so when i knew riding yeah. roughly what my speed was oh wow and you can also tailor it so you can start the ride off maybe you're aiming for 10.5 kilometers an hour say yeah. you can start the ride off at like 12 kilometers an hour yeah and do maybe eight at the end so your horse already started cooling off yeah but overall it would be the right, be speed. right speed oh that's so smart yeah I mean, it's very scientific. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get to eventing and you just go as fast as possible and that's what event is. <laughs> um, so when you get to the event, you want to go to the secretaries to get your number bib mm. and check if your route's changed. Um, and you'll also get emergency stickers for you and your horse that has the ride or there's this phone number yeah. on. So you stick one to your hat. Oh, in case you fall off. the saddle. Yeah. Okay. Um, and your number bib will be a um, cloth bib yeah. that goes over the top of you. So it's like, nice and breathable. Okay. And, not going to rub and mm. um, then you get to your horse ready for the vet check mm. um, oh and when you get there if you're a pony club member yeah. you need to present your mastercard 
to you've got a big a blue piece of card yeah. that's about uh, A5 yeah. and on it you put every detail of endurance rides you've been to so then you tally okay. them up because you have to do three of a certain heart rate and speed to qualify for champs oh cool so that just details it and it yeah. also means that when you go for your mileage badges yeah. so you get badges from headquarters for 100 250 500 and 1000 kilometers wow they've got a record yeah of all your rides so it's really easy to send off which for that. badges have you got i've got 100 and 250 well you've got to get your miles up <laughs> <laughs> oh, i've got a, i've got less than a year left in pony club i feel like it's <laughs> pushing it a bit without an endurance source <laughs> um before you vet check you need to go to the farrier yeah they always have a farrier on site and they'll check your horse's shoes oh wow um and make sure they're not loose and they haven't slipped and then you go to the vet the vet will listen to your horse's heart rate and make a note of it on your vet work sheet. out your resting heart rate yeah um and then they'll watch them trot up and then yeah. they'll give you good to go it's really like i mean it's a bit like a if you're doing an international eventing like it seems quite in like kind of intense but like a good, really good preparation for going and doing like yeah. an international event yeah I like found that. when I went to do my first three day yeah. that I was all ready I knew how to trot a horse up mm. I knew how to yeah whereas like, I had absolutely no idea the vets had to explain it to me <laughs> and cooling down was great we'll go into yeah. in a minute because so when we did endurance recruiting we had all these big fabric conditioner bottles with a handle yeah and at the end of a three day cross country you, you have ten minute box. Yeah. So we just poured all this water over our horses on yeah. hot days too and everyone's there with their buckets and sponges getting yeah. wet and not pouring much water on. And we're there with our fabric conditioner bottles from endurance, like pouring them down, that scraping it off, pouring genius. it down. It's great. And everyone was like, What are you doing? And we're like, multidisciplinary tips. That <laughs> is genius. The only multidisciplinary thing I've learned is I did this two weeks for I did two weeks for a show jumper and they taught me how to band mains over so they actually like perfectly Ooh. flat. I've been doing it all week. Uh, the amount uh, is the, the most compliments I've ever received for anything I've ever done with a horse. You have to teach me. I will do. Yeah. We'll do a video. I'll put a video on our Instagram of me doing it. Because it, honestly, I like I did it on the first horse and I was like, oh, I'm not sure the head girl's going to like it because it's very show jumpery. It makes them lie, like literally mm-hmm. perfectly flat. And every everyone I, everyone who took touched a horse that I'd done it to was like, oh my God, who did this? And I was like, well, it was me. Like kind of, Kind of like, well, I don't, don't know whether I want to own up to this. And they were like, oh my God, that's amazing. And it doesn't break the hair. And because I find if you plait, especially my horse hair, mane's wild. So when you mm. plait it, the plaits just stand up. Mm. And as soon as you take them out, the hair's wavy. And then it goes back to being standing yeah. like bolt upright. Whereas if you, I'll show, I'll show everyone. Anyway, okay. continue. <laughs> so once you've vetted, then you tack up and you go to the start. The starter mm. will record your number and start time. Mm. And then you go off. Okay. Um, so you take that quick, just like go. yeah. They're like, this is your time, this is your number. Sat in a car, and they're like, cool. But do you, you do any warming up or just? Go. Well, no, I tend not to because mm. you you've got such a long time. Yeah, you're not galloping. Mm. You do most of the ride, say Kestrel and Osprey, and, mm. and obviously intermediate it would be a trot. Yeah, with maybe bits of longer canters. Yeah. So, like, you can start and walk. Mm. and you can warm your horse up on the ride and I guess you wouldn't warm up for like a hack would you no yeah. um, maybe and you're going for such a long time especially the, the higher levels maybe for them for the competitive rides where you all start in one at a canter yeah. yes warm up but um, walking your horse around yeah. will help I just I think if you're on them for so long yeah and you don't want to you don't want to tie them more. out and anyway um yeah, you start, so you'll take your map and your talk round and your timings with you in a map case. Mm. And that's usually, like, you can put that yeah. over your shoulder and check it's the right um, tightness. Mm. The route's normally marked out for you, so it's got bits of that's tape. Good. And you'll have, like, arrows spray-painted on the ground, or you have some signs. Um, and that will help you, but really, sometimes they get taken off, sometimes yeah. they get washed away. It's good to have your map. A map with you, yeah. And um, there'll be checkpoints around the course to make sure that everyone's going on the right route. Yeah. And it's really helpful if you go past the car and you shout your number out because uh, they can't always yeah. read it from a distance and also you want to keep going, not be called back. Yeah. Um, so you ride past and you're like, 23! And then they tick you and they're like, okay! And you keep mm. going. Um, you also will work out before where your crew points are. Yeah. For about a 30 kilometre ride, depending on whether in terrain, maybe two crew points. Yeah. So one at the beginning 
one in the middle round, one closer to the end to help are it you, cooling off. Are you allowed? Like, are you only allowed two? Are they like designated areas, or is it just like wherever um, you want your parents to be? Different rides. Rides are different. Okay. So some rides only have certain designated crew points, and you just choose which ones you want. Okay. Others are like maybe these are crew points, but anywhere along this part of the route you can okay. crew. Yeah. Um, are you only allowed you. a certain number? No, you can have as many as you want. Oh, okay. Um, but it does take a bit of time. And yeah. um, also, your parents have to drive between them. Yeah. So you need to make sure there's enough time that they can get there. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. So when they get to a crew point, you want them to pour water over the horse's neck and shoulders yeah. um, to help cool down the heart. And um, also maybe on the tummy and back legs, if it's been a really sandy yeah. ride, stop rubbing. And you can have an opportunity for you to have something to eat, some yeah. drink, your horse has something to drink. Oh my god, I would um, love that. Like a little snack break. Yeah. Oh, that's so perfect. Um, and it's good to practice beforehand because some horses can get a bit wary of all the water. Okay. But we had a funny one. We went down to the New Forest and there were a load of scouts walked past yeah. at crew point and they were like, is this a horsey car wash? Like a horsey car wash? And I think they had visions in their mind of like making loads of money <laughs> bringing their horses. And my mum was like, I'm really sorry. No, it's actually a competitive long business <laughs> ride. And they were like, oh, okay. Oh, bless them. <laughs> um, on longer rides... You get vet gates. Yeah. So halfway around the course, or however many times, you have to stop. You have half an hour to get your horse's heart rate as low as possible yeah. for your vet to check. And then you get back on and you go again. Yeah. So it's like midway stop, make sure your horse is still sound, yeah. fit enough, um, that it's all okay. Yeah. And then you get going again. Um, but those only come in usually when you're around like 60 kilometres plus. Okay. Um, then once you've finished your ride, you get back to the venue and you have 30 minutes from finishing yeah. to vet. Okay. So you have to vet in those 30 minutes. It's usually a good idea to go around 20 minutes. Yeah. If there's a queue, you can kind of hang around. So you want to wash your horse down. Um, you want to walk it around so it doesn't mm-hmm. stiffen up. And also walking will help it cool down. Um, and encourage it to try and pee is good. Yeah. Offer it water because your vet will also check for dehydration. Yeah. Um, and then you go back. That will take your horse's heart rate and trot it up again. And um, at a lot of rides, they use the difference between your starting heart rate, your finishing heart rate, and your speed yeah. to determine, it's called a performance formula, and that will work out either placings or gradings. So it's not like, I mean, I know there's an optimum time, but it's not just like the far, the closest to the optimum time. Oh. No, so when I did the novice endurance champs, yeah. The optimum speed was 10 kilometers an hour. So if you went over that, yeah. you had a zero for your speed. Yeah. And then it was... Is that good or bad? That's good. Okay. So you want lowest as possible, like eventing. And then it was a heart rate of 36 and lower yeah. was zero. Anything above that was one. Yeah. So I think my pony finished on 39. Yeah. So he had a score of three yeah. to finish because we went 10.5. Mm. Um, and then the girl that was second yeah. had like a score of 40 so oh, wow. or 41 so she ended up on like 4 or 5 points mm. and I beat her yeah. on the heart rate Yeah. Um, so it's really good to know that and they tend to use to use the finishing but sometimes it's a good comparison to yeah. know how fit your horse is when they've come back to their resting yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it's really interesting what equipment and like I mean, yeah, rider equipment, do you need for it? Is it the same, pretty much the same as eventing, or do you have to have, like, special, I don't know, special stuff? So <laughs> for the rider, there's not really any special stuff, but your hat has to be up to standard mm. and tagged to Pony Club. And when you... You might prefer a lighter weight hat. I thought that was going to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. I mean, I did endurance in a normal, like, a gatehouse. Yeah. Um because I was like, I'm not sure I want to be an endurance rider, and they're quite expensive. Yeah. Um, but when you start wearing them for more than three hours... They need to be comfortable. Yeah. And if you've got a really hot day, yeah. a venting hat is probably not going to cut it. Yeah. Um, your boots and chaps are probably more comfortable than long boots because you have more flexibility. And you are allowed to ride in walking boots or trainers. Really? As long as you wear cages on your stirrups. Um, there's no specific dress code for endurance. You can yeah. wear whatever you want. Yeah. But your clothes must fit and they need to be comfortable and specific for the weather. Okay. So, like, obviously, you want to wear a raincoat, yeah. but you're going to get warm riding, so maybe get a lightweight one. Mm. Um, so you don't... It's not like most pony club disciplines where, like, you have to wear cream-coloured jobs. No. You have to wear... So I used to wear, for endurance, I'd wear 
be- old beige jodhpurs because mm. I was doing pony club yeah. and it was smart. I have like boots and chaps. And then I had a pony club camp t-shirt on yeah. that I wore. Okay. And then like a jacket on top if it was rainy. Yeah. Um, and I had a reflective hat band on because yeah. mum was like, be safe, be seen. Um, <laughs> you also want your map case to put mm. all your information in. And yeah. I was always told to wear a bum bag. Yeah. Um, because then you can put like a hoof pick in, a piece of string, your phone, maybe the some classics. snacks. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're allowed to carry a stick, but you're not allowed to wear spurs. Okay. Spurs are not allowed for endurance. Okay. Um, for your horse, you don't need fancy tack at all. You can wear whatever you'd ride your horse in normally. Yeah. But it needs to fit well because it's going to be on the horse yeah. for a long time. As you go up the leather levels, you might want to... You can get combined head collar and bridles. Yeah. Where you unclip the bit um, because then you, it's easier to offer your horse water halfway yeah. around. And you don't have to like take it on and off as much for vet gates. Yeah. Um, is it worth it? I know they do a lot, like most endurance riders use a lot of thin, synthetic tack because mm-hmm. it's lighter. Is it worth getting or? Um, I did. Only really? because I got, a, you should put a picture on the Instagram. I had a beautiful turquoise bridal from Robinson's. It was um, webbing. Yeah. Um, purely because I thought it was cool. Yeah. And also it went in the washing machine. It was cool. You were right. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, it went in the washing machine, but because it was oh, synthetic, no soap. <laughs> I couldn't um, punch extra holes in it. And because oh, yeah. my pony's a weird shape, the flash was too big yeah. with the cob. Um, so I had to put like a leather flash on <laughs> and then it all fitted. Um, but yeah, you could do. Yeah. But like if you're doing it at the lower pony club levels, like just getting involved, is is it worth it? Or would you wait until you're more like into it? Um, not worth it for weight. Okay. Because <laughs> not for that distance. Okay. Um, you are also allowed boots and bandages, but you probably should try not to wear them because they can slip. Yeah. Or get bits of grit in them. And Are you well. allowed to get off and readjust them? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, but you obviously need to have a horse you can get back on easily. Yeah. And mine wasn't. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, key dates coming up. Yeah. You've got the Pony Club Endurance Championships on the 15th of August at Euston Park. Yeah. How do you qualify for those? Do you, Is there, like, other area competitions or would you just No. Enter? So, Pony Club at the moment kind of runs alongside EGB, Endurance yeah. Great Britain. Or there's the Scottish Endurance equivalent okay. so you enter rides yeah you have to do three rides yeah. of a certain level so i think for qualify for um the grassroots you have to do three rides between 15 and 20 kilometers mm. finishing within a set speed and heart rate and then those get logged and sent to head office with your mastercard and then that's you qualified oh easy yeah oh wow so is it i mean do loads of people go um no well, I suppose not the moment. <laughs> not at the do. moment. It's not sort of growing. But it's something that I remember we got a team, some teams together for a few mm. years because it was literally we sent them all to the same competitions. Mm. They all got qualified and then they go as a team. And because there weren't very many teams, there were like two teams, yeah. they ended up winning champs because Aww. it wasn't a big discipline. And it's something that anyone can take part yeah. in. Um, and if you want to get started, what you can do is the Pony Club have the access to endurance badge and also yeah. a competition badge yeah. that you can run in your branch and it's like a little intro. You can do it in a field, practice trotting up, yeah. practice crewing. I would love that. Like I, I love like I love trotting horses. <laughs> it's a really sad thing to really like doing, mm. but I really enjoy it. There's a intro to endurance day actually. Um, oh, it's near Chepstow coming yeah. up in June. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember who's organising it, but I got an email about it because both want me to organise endurance for them. Nice. <laughs> and they're running like a little ride and information day. Yeah. And if you want, and you're really keen, you can get in touch with the head office and you can organise your own ride in your branch. Yeah. They'll give you all the things to do, like your own competition and everyone, your people can qualify, get one qualifying oh. ride in. Or look on the Endurance Great Britain website for all their rides. Mm. And you can literally, you don't have to be a member of EGB. It's just easy. Yeah, you can just sign up. And they do pleasure rides as well yeah so if you want to just go and hack wherever yeah. the ride's taking place you can pay your money and you can go really that's so nice because the one that i did that was lovely was windsor great park ride yeah i really want to do that it like, was beautiful all on sandy tracks yeah. and you went past guards polo club yeah. and down the long walk and that was yeah. a pleasure ride as well that you could just sign up and you oh, could just wow. go for your hack so they used to have um, <coughs> A one day, a one day event, a three day event. They used yeah. to have an event at Windsor Great Park, and we always used to fence judge when we were little. I mean, it finished in two thousand and five, I think. 
so we were quite little then, but it was like my favourite, favourite place to go and I would love to go and do the pleasure ride just to like just to go round. Like even though I can't do it can't do the event, I would love to go round. Lots of the rides as well, they take place in national parks. Yeah. So, so they're really beautiful. And it's places that you wouldn't normally get to go. Yeah. Um so yeah, some of the, some cool places I've been doing. We'll go and do some p- pony podcast pleasure rides. Yeah. <laughs> well there was something that made me laugh. I had to drive someone to Kiso recently. Yeah. Question Center that this yeah. big event at and all that and they were there for a dressage premiere show yeah. and she's like have you been to Kiso before and I was like I did the pony club endurance champs there <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've been there actually so yeah oh that's so nice well I hope everyone's enjoyed learning about endurance as much as I have which has been really nice it's been really nice to just sit in silence and you talk to be honest I'm very tired as per I was very tired for the last episode as well it's fine we take it in turns yeah okay um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have we'll put some photos up of Alex doing it very well at endurance so that you can see all well, the tack that she used and the aforementioned turquoise he- turquoise bridle <laughs> Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you guys go and get involved because it seems like a really really cool sport to do yeah and there's so much you can learn from it even if you eventually go off and do eventing yeah you learn so much about your fitness of your horse yeah um, and how to ride a tired horse mm. and um, this also about speed yeah which is so important terrain. to learn are you allowed like I mean are you allowed to stopwatch yeah. so you can be like go faster go slower but generally because it's so long you want a normal watch. Yeah. Because stopwatches tend to just do an hour. Yeah. Um, but it's like riding on different terrain as well. I remember one year, the year I went to Pony Club Champs and it was at Chumley. Yeah. We'd just passed, I think it was the last crew point and there was this really steep stony hill. Yeah. So you had to get off and walk your pony down it. Really? Because it was all stony and, un- and yeah. loose. And I think if I'd ridden my pony down it, I was worried he was going to fall. Yeah. So like, you had to get off and lead him down yeah. and get back on the bottom. and Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And they are the sort of things that are really important to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you decide not to do endurance you do need to learn how to judge your speed and to look after your horse and all of that um, so yeah if you want to learn any more about this either contact us or your local pony club branch because they'll have access to all of the information that you need and like us on Instagram and like us on like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and if you have any suggestions or there are any other sports you want to know about then feel absolutely free to email theponypod at gmail.com and if this has inspired you to get involved with endurance we'd love to see any pictures yeah tag us and the pony club as well pony club is um at uk pony club official yeah not ukpc um we will repost any tagged photos so go ahead and go wild and we'll repost everything that you tag us in happy endurance riding yeah all right bye